So we're going to go ahead and go over how to chip paint on your base color and more importantly your stencils. Um, I originally developed this technique so that you can chip each layer of paint of the stencil separately. So as you can see here the yellow, black and white are all chipped um, individually and you can see them on top of each other. So the first pieces that I attempted to do this with were just some shipping containers and they turned out very well. Um, I went ahead and sold these on eBay, so if somebody has these on their game board out there, I think in New York City. So, uh, the second piece was the water tower, and I went ahead and used a blister foam to apply the mask. I'll go ahead and show you exactly how to do that. But the blister foam seemed to give me a much um, finer gradient and smaller paint chips. So the product that you're going to need to apply to get the paint chips is a liquid solder mask. This is usually used for surface mount soldering of electronics and it's much thicker than the latex mask that you can buy at the art supply store and ounce for ounce it's cheaper. So here I'm applying the solder mask with a drywall sponge which gives me bigger splotches, a little bit coarser paint chips. Um, what I'd recommend you do is after you apply it with the drywall sponge in it, sets up is go ahead and apply a second coat with blister foam. So once the solder mask is set up you're going to go ahead and paint the piece and what I prefer to use is just standard acrylic craft paint and then we'll reduce it with a little airbrush reducer from Wicked Color. Um, both these are available at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. And you just go ahead and reduce it down quite a bit and get as thin a coat as you can on the piece so that it makes it easier to chip. I have not had a chance to try brushing on paint with this technique, but I think that it would work just fine. It just might be a little bit more effort to get the solder mask off and chip the paint for the final step. So now we're going to go ahead and apply a stencil. The reason why I'm going to do it now, as you can see, it kind of is underneath a walkway. So I won't be able to get in here to apply this stencil once I finish gluing on the wooden um, decks that protrude from the surface. So what I'm using here for the stencil is clear plastic and you can get boxes of this. Um, go ahead and go on Amazon and search for um, cellophane or um, transparencies for copy machines. You can get them real cheap because nobody uses transparencies anymore, they just use PowerPoint. So the stencil has been taped on and I'm just using standard airbrush paint here. This is Jet Black from Wicked Colors. And once you have the first stencil on the black dries, then I apply a stencil on this is a um, slightly smaller skull than the black. And I need to go ahead and apply the eyes here and the small pieces of cellophane that block the um, black portion that will form the eyes and the nostril. What I'm doing is I'm going ahead and using the solder mask to glue these on. So here you can see how the solder mask will hold the eye and nostril stencils in place while you go ahead and apply the white paint over the black. When I apply the white paint I wanted it to look a little grungy and a little bit yellow and faded. Um, so after I apply a second coat of solder mask over the black here I went ahead and mixed up three parts white to one part yellow ochre and again I'm using the Wicked Colors airbrush paint. Then I just go ahead and apply the white and I'll pull back the stencil regularly and adjust it so that I can kind of fade the white over the black so that I don't have real sharp edges. Um, I felt that it just looked a little bit better on this piece since it was done by Orcs. I wasn't too worried about the stencil lining up perfect and I wanted it to be a little bit sloppy. Then you just use an X-Acto knife to pop off the uh, cellophane that has been held on over the eyes and nostril. And this is the finished stencil. So now what I'm going to do before I chip the paint is I'm going to mix up a wash. And you want to make sure to just use water and inks when you do this wash. Um, you don't want to use any flow improver or matte medium as it has a tendency to create a barrier over the paint that makes it harder to chip the paint and get down to that um, solder mask that you've laid down. 
So I'll just start with the lightest colors and mix them in with the water and kind of blot it onto a paper towel until I'm happy with the color that I have. One thing to keep in mind when you're applying this initial layer of wash is it should be very subtle and very light. And once you've applied it to a piece uh, or section of the model, you don't want to go back over it with a brush. It'll start to pull the chipped paint off. You don't want to quite do that yet. You want to get this initial weathering done and bring out some of those shadows with the wash, let it dry, and then we'll go ahead and complete the chipped paint by removing the mask. So just go ahead and apply it and let it fill into those cracks. Um, go ahead and let it streak because you're going to go ahead and, and let it start to cause the weathering of the piece. And so let the water flow down and let it start to streak and it, it'll help out when we go to do uh, the intentional streaks and the intentional weathering down the road. It just gives us another layer and adds to the realism. So as you can see here, the wash is dried and it's quite light. Um, it really shows up in the rougher pieces and where I intentionally applied the streaks here. So now to start removing the paint, what you're going to get is, um, it's called a jeweler's scratch brush and these are available on eBay for cheap. Um, I recommend using the nylon bristles. They have a tendency to pull the mask off and not wear down or damage the paint where you want it to remain and it won't pull very much of the wash off. Other tools that are handy for this is a toothbrush and tweezers to get in there in the tighter locations around the wooden pieces and where I've glued down the planks. Once you use a scratch brush to start to pull back the solder mask then you can just rub your finger over it and it'll come off real quick for you. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, the next one will be weathering and I'll also put a tutorial out on how to do the wooden decks and the wooden planks with the uh, wooden nails in them. So thanks for your time and please subscribe.